Thank you very much, Alison. Hi, everybody. I'm Hannah Newbury. Really excited to talk to you today about my research topic, which is on the topic of employee engagement. I'm particularly interested in the personal dimension of engagement, which is somewhat underrepresented uh, in a lot of the academic literature. So today I'm going to use the time to talk to you about what the personal dimension of engagement is and where my literature review and methodology might go as part of my studies. So I thought a useful place to start would be what is employee engagement? So we've got here a typical standard image of what engaged employees might look like. Uh, so they're happy, satisfied, cheering. I love my job. This is perhaps an uh, optimistic standard approach which uh, organisations might like to think that their engaged employees look like. And that's one of the starting points for my, uh, my research area. We have uh, a topic which is widely focused on organisational outcomes of engagement. So high performing, uh, high productivity, um, interested, engaged, these are uh, largely organisational driven outcomes of engagement. And this is a lot of what has influenced engagement studies to date. In 2008, the Engage for Success movement um, was initiated by the government as part of the uh, part of the movement towards increasing the UK's competitiveness in times of, of hardship. And so because employee engagement was considered to be uh, really great at giving high performance and high productivity, the movement was initiated to see how we might do that better. So in 2009, following a huge study of lots of different organisations, um, lots of different experts and existing research, the Engage for Success movement defined employee engagement in the following way. So they said that employee engagement is a workplace approach which results in the right conditions for employees to give their best each day. They're committed to the goals and values of the organisation, motivated to continued success and with a sense of their own well-being. Again, there's a lot of big, big, uh, business language being used there and a lot of um, uh, ways in which an organisation might control, influence and manipulate engagement. For example, a workplace approach sounds as if engagement is something we are doing to employees. And I want to look at this in a different way. So another useful way of uh, considering what employee engagement is, is using the metaphor of a uh, gear stick. So in a car, we have a gear stick and according to the situation we're in, we put the, uh, the car in a certain gear. So much like engagement, we engage into a gear or we might disengage depending on our circumstances in the situation. It's very highly influenced on our environment. So like engagement, the organizational context, what's going on around us. But this metaphor is particularly different because it identifies the individual's choice and influence over engaging or disengaging. We choose according to what's around us, which gear to put into, hopefully, um, according to, to our circumstances around us. And so this is a slightly different way of thinking that engagement could be a choice. In 2015, the CIPD uh, defined employee engagement as an internal state of being. And we can see here a slight difference in the way of, of defining employee engagement by suggesting that there are physical, mental and emotional elements of employee engagement. So this uh, interest between the organisational outcomes and focus of engagement and perhaps the internal state of being is where my research interests started. What I'd like to do is just point out I've chosen purposely some very mainstream, easily accessed definitions of employee engagement here, because I think that's some of the uh, issues that we have with defining what engagement is and what the outcomes are. I'll talk about that further when I look at my literature review later. So for me personally, um, I wanted to find out where did the engagement concept start? And for uh, the research that I found, it was uh, started with um, someone called William Kahn. So I'm going to take you through that, that uh, concept, the building of the engagement concept story now. So William Kahn is widely considered to be the founding father of employee engagement. His research in 1990 looked at two aspects. He explored the psychological experience of so the behaviours and attitudes of the individual in work alongside the influence of individual, group, interpersonal, organisational levels of influence on that psychological experience. So from his research, 
He defined his engagement suggestion through personal engagement and personal disengagement, and that has led into this idea of what employee engagement is. So I found it useful to look at how he's defined personal engagement and personal disengagement. So we can see that personal engagement is defined by Khan as the harnessing of organisation members' selves to their work roles. In engagement, people employ and express themselves, and uh, these are through physical, cognitively or emotional role performances. On the flip side, Khan said there is a personal disengagement as well, and this is where we uncouple ourselves from our roles um, and withdraw and defend ourselves. So we can see Khan is describing here something quite different to the organisational uh, focus of engagement that I defined to you at the beginning. And my research wants to find out why aren't we looking at engagement in the same ways as Khan has suggested? Why aren't we focusing on this personal element and dimension of engagement? What has the existing literature missed out? And what will we gain from going back to this idea of personal engagement? I'll talk you through now what is personal engagement. You can see from that uh, definition that I showed you there, it's a very personal, involved, self-considering um, uh, position in which we consider ourselves within roles. Khan also said uh, personal engagement is a behaviour in which we bring in or leave out aspects of ourselves during work performances. And what's interesting here is this sounds as if it's an opt-in or opt-out choice of engagement, which is something that uh, perhaps isn't quite explored <coughs> as much. Khan said that we have a preferred self and we put our preferred selves into a presence in which we are in work and that can be through physical, cognitive or emotional role performances. And so Khan said we have a choice of choosing to express and employ those selves or to withdraw and defend those selves, similar to what we, uh, we looked at earlier. So what we can see here is Khan's definition of personal engagement being different to typical mainstream understandings of employee engagement. What it's useful to think about here in terms of personal engagement is the influence of the wider context of HR management and what arguments are going on, which I'd like to talk about now. And I'm interested in this in my, uh, my, my research to think about how outside influence and power and control might be influencing personal engagement. So some of the discussions we've got within wider HR management is that there is uh, an increasing tendency to consider um, human resource approaches in terms of the uh, psychological terms we might interpret them through. So um, Goodard, I've quoted here, um, suggests that the nature of HRM to be considered um, between, through psychological terms is causing uh, employees to become considered as objects as to be manipulated and disciplined. And so what will be interesting is to consider, well, where does personal engagement fit in if we're suggesting organisations manipulate and control? And what has organisational engagement, so the existing employee engagement, done already to manipulate and control this notion? Harley uh, identifies that overall human experience of work has become a means to an end. And there is an argument here to say we need to draw this back and think about the experience of work itself rather than focusing on the end result. Let's bring this back to the, uh, the individual experience. And so Purcell places these arguments within the work engagement um, context. And he says, in fact, work engagement doesn't actually acknowledge any of these arguments and therefore we're presenting a distorting and misleading mirror on the experience of workers in employment. So unlike the employees in this picture, I want to consider the personal uh, element of engagement. I want to think about the impact of this apparent influence on engagement and consider the extent to which the organisation <coughs> might control and influence a person's engagement. With, with an organisation. So I'm going to consider things such as uh, values, identity, personality in relation to engagement and think about what that, uh, that means in terms of personal, personal engagement. And I'll be questioning the extent to which an, individual, uh, an individualised approach to employee engagement has or hasn't so far been considered. So just to summarise some of the problems that I've spoken about already and where I want my research to focus. I've suggested that there is a disproportionate concern in existing literature on gains and outcomes for organisations. 
And I've said that this might have been influenced by organisations having a tendency to control and power within employee engagement and perhaps within the wider context. I've identified there's a considerate lack of research into Khan's personal engagement and that we've overlooked some of his key concepts um, in literature and, and research so far. And that large scale approaches to so large organizational approaches to personal engagement aren't useful for what he defines as that individual um, element and personalized feelings and behaviors and aspects of self. I also want to find out what does it actually mean to experience engagement at a personal and individual level? What did Khan mean when he defined those things and how might we explain what they feel and look like? I'll consider those elements through these four research questions. So I will try and work out and explore what are the personal dimensions of employee engagement? How do they differ from existing understandings? Um, and what experience do we have at that individual level? I'll think about what obstacles might already be in, in uh, the way for personal engagement and how organizational impact might uh, currently impact on engagement. I'll just talk you through some elements of my literature review now. Um, to start with, I'll look at the different definitions we have for employee engagement, which I've already indicated to you could be quite problematic. We can see here three different definitions for employee engagement, and trust me, there are many, many more. The Engage for Success uh, report I spoke about earlier in 2009 alone found over 50 definitions. So this will be an interesting area to work out where we've moved away from personalised engagement. I will then think about employee engagement and personalised engagement in accordance to associated concepts. So there's some debates within employee engagement that uh, engagement is old wine in new bottles. So it's suggesting that we are just bottling up and making uh, a new concept to consider things such as uh, commitment, satisf satisfaction, motivation. And I'll think about that in terms of personal engagement and Khan's definitions. I'm going to look at this idea of impact, power and influence I spoke about already. Literature focuses on organisational outcomes at the moment and the consultancy and practitioner interest that has high, uh, arguably um, led debates so far in engagement has had a negative consequence on engagement. I'll look at these arguments I've spoken about within the wider context of HR management and also think about the way in which the individual and self might be considered. So drawing back to this personal engagement, what existing research and literature is there and how might we uh, better understand the subject? There is some existing work by Sandbrook et al um, who have identified a lot of the issues I've already explained to you. And so my methodology will likely be quite based on their um, suggestions and their recommendations. So they have argued that Khan's definition, his subtle discretionary self-orientated aspects of employee engagement are underrepresented and under, under um, researched. And they will say that we need to um, design our methodology to uh, really understand the experience of employee engagement at the personal level. And therefore, my research is likely to be um, highly reliant on in-depth, semi-structured interviews. Most likely interpretive, uh, interpretive approaches, but Sam Bricketel also suggests that there should be some other considerations as well, which are, I'll consider. So just to summarise my research outcomes, I hope by the end of my PhD, I'll be able to contribute towards an increased knowledge of personal engagement and what it means to be engaged for the individual. We'll shift hopefully the focus and the purpose of engagement away from the organisation back to the individual and address the lack of qualitative research into the topic. Thank you very much. Interest in it. Was there any one thing that kind of sparked your interest, any kind of personal experiences? Yeah, um, I uh, came to research by um, kind of fluke. I was working in an organisation beforehand, and I learned about employee engagement kind of by accident. And I was really infuriated by the fact that there wasn't any active personal individual. Um, a chance for us to understand engagement and it was more of a strategic this is what engagement strategy will be and this is how we're going to do it to you so that's how I got my, the, the interest really is um, engagement means something different to me than what the organization was presenting it as and why aren't I able to explain that or get involved with it 
Yeah. Um, and that really shows you if you have that passionate interest with you can sustain you kind of doing this in the next few years or so. <laughs> um, obviously you've done an awful lot of work on your literature review so far and I think that, that's very well stretched and you, you know where you're aiming with that. Um, and that's where you, you know, your kind of focus is at the moment. But obviously you're looking to do interviews and I would say the methodology is quite appropriate. Okay. This interpretivist kind of get them talking to people. Who are you going to talk to? Have you thought about that yet? Kind of what organize I'm just wondering what the rationale is for size of organization mm. type, organization types of employees. Mm. Um if I knew that question would come. I did <laughs> include I did include some <laughs> suggestion about my context. Um when I started with my proposal, I was suggesting that I would want to focus on SMEs. Um, they perhaps need the most help, and, and you, you touched there on my passion does come from, I worked in an SME and it was not a priority at all. Um, so I thought perhaps that, you know, I could um, research into how we can better improve engagement um, in SMEs. As I'm doing more and more research, I'm not so certain anymore if I'm entirely honest. Um, I'd like to um, get involved with as many organisations as possible, but I'm perhaps thinking because of the personal personalised approach that I'm going to have to take, it might have to go down other routes. Um, mm -hmm. So, pass. Uh, <laughs> that's fine, it's still very early on. It's yeah. good when you get to that point, it's having the rationale. Yeah. And it's just, this is just an aside, because I was at a research colloquium a couple of weeks ago in Finland, and they were talking about a presentation from a Canadian professor looking at non traditional kind of working. Yeah. So, you mentioned kind of the initial talk about a non traditional kind of working methods, and they were very focused on this idea of remote working. The fact that a lot of our graduates aren't going to go into kind of traditional yeah. working in a company in that situation, they might be traveling the world and, and um, working remotely or home working or co, you know, co working spaces. Any thoughts on that within this? This kind of how you would engage with people in that respect? Yes, that sounds fantastic. Um, I, I, I'm, re I'm really unsure at the moment, mm. if I'm honest. That sounds like an area which could be quite useful and also, yeah, um, yeah would be a, a little bit of a different view on engagement in the topic overall. Mm. That's one of the main issues is it's always been measured and identified and successed in quite traditional ways. So yeah. perhaps that so could be an area that I could consider. Yeah. No, yeah, thank you. I, I, no, I appreciate it. Very open-minded to uh, any suggestions. That's enough of me. I'm very enthusiastic questions here. Okay, um, back to that. That's really, really interesting. Um, to me, the, the whole kind of premise of employee engagement is you have this kind of fully um, sort of motivated workforce that are really, I mean, that's the ideal, that are really up for uh, giving 110% and contribute to a highly kind of high-performance working mm. organisation. And the only other state to be within that literature seems to be um, disengagement, mm. where you're demotivated and you're not really that interested. But how about employees that are positively, that are engaged, but they're negatively engaged, mm. so very active within the organisation, but yeah, effectively they're saboteurs. And I've never really come across that covered in the literature. Mm. I've worked with people that do this. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they are fully engaged with the organisation, but not in good ways. And it's how within that sort of theory, particularly at a personal level, mm. I think you might come across those kinds of stories. I was just wondering where that might fit in the literature that you yeah, really good point. Um, burnout, there's so much experiment, uh, so much discussion on burnout as the opposite to engagement. So we made a choice quite early on to focus really in on this employee engagement element because there's reams and reams of literature. But I think you're right in terms of I'm going to get conversations and stories and experiences of, uh, you know, what disengagement feels for them. And that's where I'm going to depend back on Khan. Um, if I were to go down, I don't think I've got a life long enough to go down all the investigation of the burnout literature and the opposite is the antithesis. You know, there's a lot and lot to look into. So perhaps what I want to focus on is uh, if people are uh, disengaged, but, um, you know, busy with it and, 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 you know, coming across as engaged. What does that mean to them? That's where I strip it back to the personalised element. I think that's where I'm coming. There could be a, a, an opening in the literature. Yeah. Here. OK. Because oh, okay. it's not yeah. disengagement. I think you know often yeah. people are working against the organization very very actively yeah so there could be space within that literature yeah. to create something a little bit unique if you get any of that kind of emerging through your from your stories yeah yeah thank you yes yeah 
I was, it was just, um, how do you come across Spinerman and uh, looking at emotion in the workplace? No. He's, a, he's a, a, an older source, of, I think his, stuff, his work stopped around 2000. But the, I have a couple of references, That's there great. might be a few uh, little hooks there because he reads organisational life through an emotional mm -hmm. lens and, and it's, that just speaks to not treating uh, human experience at work as that of the machine. Brilliant. That, and that's where I am at the moment is I'm now working out where to go into that individual level, emotion, personality, mindset, you know, all of those things will feed into uh, what the personalised experience is. And so that's where we're going. That's where I'm going next is exploring those different things. So fab, yes, please. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's just a point really about the question and you said that, that's it. Go back, you know, about something, you your approach now. And you kind of suggested it could be SMEs, but that is taking the organisational perspective where I think, you, you know, you should, might say, you should be focusing on the individual. Yeah. There's, there's been a lot written recently about the changing nature of work and careers and work values. And maybe, you know, you could start thinking about different kinds of people. Yeah. You know, so one is people who work in the sort of big, big economy. You know? yeah. One is uh, looking at uh, generational theory. Very old relationship. <laughs> so that, that kind of, you know, taking that kind of perspective, because I, I presume it, you know, kind of which generation you're in, that kind of determines your attitudes to work and what you expect mm -hmm. out of work and how you engage and how you relate to things like trust and psychological contract, all these different mm -hmm. things. So, so it's kind of an observation, really. Mm -hmm. It would be quite interesting to possibly pursue that kind of Yeah, thank you. And I agree. That's, that's why I didn't. Have previously put this this slide in because I'm I'm not so sure anymore. I'm not mm -hmm. sure I want to um, uh, like you say go in according to, to the organisation that feels wrong to what I'm trying to investigate. So yeah. I'm... No, I'll just carry on. Okay. <laughs> but it, 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 it can't says you know you take it yourself you know, into your work and it almost sounds like itself is a static thing. Like, um... you know, this is myself, not. But actually, it's, I don't it probably isn't. In a way, that could be an interesting stance as well. So how does the self Changing. Yeah, a lot of his work about the self came from um, Goffman and his mm -hmm. um, role performances and putting on a performance in the workplace. Mm -hmm. so that's that's where I'm interested to see, yeah, where that goes. So, yeah, so Goffman's point is you, you have different selves mm -hmm. in different scenarios. <laughs> yeah. So, when you go to work, which self is it? Is it? Actually trying to... Yeah, exactly. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I was looking at the way you can. Explain some define um, the, the personal and, and engagement. In my view, I think it's somehow it's the expectations from of organizations which which try to define the personal and engagement. It's it, 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 it's interesting to find out the individual views about whether that we mean by the Mm. And it's interesting to see how similar or how different mm. is it from how you can actually uh, define that. Because if, if you are looking at the, the, the definition, it's like the expectations from the um, mm. um, 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 organization with respect to the person that you have to do this, you have to do that, you mm -hmm. have to do that, achieving the objective of the of organization. But how about the individual's view about personal engagement or operational similar? Thank you. You've, you've summarised my <laughs> interest exactly. Yeah, that's exactly it. Is there doesn't seem to be a voice or a way in which uh, individuals can explain what that feels like on an individual level. Um, Khan said there's multiple layers of engagement, interpersonal, intergroup, uh, organisational, and that's what I'm suggesting is that there's not there's been too much focus at the, the top end. We need to kind of um, dig down a bit deeper and see what, what individuals' views are and how that's explained. Any other questions? Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much.